what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be taking you through optimizing Atomic Heart. I'll skip through all of the boring Windows optimization stuff. As you know the drill, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. This one's entirely going to focus on this game. Obviously, before we begin, make sure you have as many programs closed in the background as possible and fire up Atomic Heart. The first time you fire up the game, you'll get a shader optimization. You'll need to wait for this to finish before we should proceed as you get much better performance as soon as this is done. And when shader optimization is done, like night and day, your FPS will get much better. So I'll continue here and we'll head to options to begin. On the main menu here, forward display, brightness and image sharpening are your preference. We'll start with windowed mode. Set this to full screen and VSync turn this off. FPS cap should be the same as your monitor, if not a bit higher. You can raise it to 300, which is much higher than you'll probably get. But if you find that your graphics card is being completely given to this game, leaving nothing for, say, OBS to record with, you can drop this FPS cap to just a little bit below the actual FPS numbers that you're getting. By doing so, you'll leave a bit of your GPU available for OBS and other recording software to use. For me, I'll leave this as 300, the highest possible cap. Screen resolution should match your display or at least be a compatible resolution that way you won't be rendering too many pixels and not seeing all of them and if this is lower or incompatible your screen will look blurry so it should match your display and display selection is just your preference it's whatever monitor you're playing on I'll apply changes with space the screen will flash and when we get back in FPS should be a little bit better the menu should be a little bit less laggy heading across to the quality section here we have a preset at the very top you can set this based on your graphics card, Atomic being the highest, and it goes from low, medium, high, ultra, and atomic. I'd recommend you start on medium and work your way up, otherwise if you have a low-end PC, set it to low and work your way up once more. Now, usually depth of field and motion blur lead to a blurry looking game. If you're in for a better looking experience and not necessarily a more cinematic experience, I'd recommend turning these both off. These will both help with your vision in game. Motion blur often leads to motion sickness, so if you find yourself being sensitive to that, turn this off as well. Ansi aliasing is your preference. If you don't like jagged edges, you can have this on, on whatever option you prefer. Personally, I like this on Disable. You get much better FPS at barely any visual cost. I'd recommend you use DLSS Super Resolution if you have it available. Obviously, you'll need an NVIDIA graphics card to use it. Otherwise, you can use Fidelity FX Super Resolution here, which is graphics card agnostic. All of these go from quality to performance, except for DLSS starts a performance and works to quality. Basically, the more performant you select this option to be, the lower the game resolution will be and the more AI will be used to upscale. The more to the performance end you push this, the better your FPS will be drastically, but if you push it too far, you'll notice weird graphic glitches and things like that. I'd recommend, if you have this on, setting it to either quality or balanced. Having it as anything more to the performance side could make you really start seeing some weird graphic glitches. So, NVIDIA use a DLSS super resolution quality or balanced, otherwise graphics card agnostic, use Fidelity FX on quality or balanced once more. I'll be using DLSS here. DLSS frame generation, as it says on NVIDIA 40 series cards, which is the 4080, 4090, etc. It won't work on anything below the 40 series, so the 30 series and below will have no effect. This doubles your FPS number, which is crazy, by inserting sort of in-between frames between all of the frames you're currently getting. If you have a 40 series graphics card, absolutely turn this on. When you do, you're not able to use NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex helps decrease the latency with your mouse and keyboard into the game and what you see back from it. I'd recommend, if you have this option available to you and an NVIDIA graphics card, select on. If you have a heavily CPU limited PC, set it to boost. I'll be leaving this on just on. Then animation quality should have barely any effect on FPS in the game, but if you're watching a cutscene and finding that your FPS is dropping quite a bit, set this to medium or low. I'll leave it on medium. Shadows, as this isn't necessarily a Twitch shooter, but it does have some shooter elements to it, it's more of a story-based game, I'd recommend leaving this on low or medium. Otherwise, if you don't mind bad-looking shadows or pixely blurry shadows, set this to low for better FPS. I'll leave it on low here. Scrolling down, ambient occlusion should have almost no effect on FPS. Leave this on low or medium. Visual effects, if you find that when lots is going on on your screen, lots of particles and things like that, that's what this will affect. If we lower this, you'll see fewer of those effects, but at least your FPS won't drop randomly and quite badly so. 
if you're struggling a lot of the time. This is a good option to lower if you find that being an issue for you. Number of objects, this mainly has to do with the amount of VRAM on your graphics card and how much it can process in parallel. If you find that when you're in the big open world and you're losing tons of FPS, drop this to low. Materials, I don't think is the same as textures. It doesn't have any description text here. I would assume this has to do with how light affects different materials, reflections, etc. I'd leave this on medium or even low. Volumetric fog is the quality of volumetric fog. Leaving this on low could leave the game a bit more difficult to see through fog. I'd recommend leaving this on medium. Anything higher is just going to kill your FPS for no reason. You can also turn this off, which I think turns off volumetric fog entirely, giving you even better vision. But of course, you may notice some weird things in a distance, such as low quality textures, etc. So I'd leave this on medium. Otherwise, turn this off if you don't want any volumetric fog. Post processing. This should have barely any impact. But if you find yourself losing FPS when Whenever there's explosions and bright things happening, this is something you can drop to low or medium. Textures completely has to do with the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. You can set this between low, medium, high, ultra, and max. I'd say if you have a 2 gig graphics card, set this to low. Anywhere around 4 gigs, medium, 6 gigs, high, 8 gigs, ultra, and anything above that, you can comfortably set this to max without needing to worry about VRAM. Because I have 12 gigs of VRAM, I'll leave this on high, giving me really good quality textures, and it shouldn't really have a huge performance impact. You'll only notice a performance impact if you push this too high, and your graphics card VRAM maxes out. Of course, that could also lead to crashing. Texture anisotropy has to do with anisotropic filtering on textures, and it shouldn't really have a huge performance impact other than when textures are being loaded in. Leaving this on 2 or 4 is fine. Lower end graphics cards, you can disable this entirely. I'll leave it on 4. 3D model quality, this has to do with the quantity of models nearby you, and I think probably further away as well. The higher you have this option, the more detailed polygons will be, the more smooth, rounded edges on people and things like that will look. It's a good idea to have this on medium or high if you want a much better looking game, but if you're struggling with FPS, you can set this down to low. I'll leave it on medium. Vegetation density, this you can comfortably drop down to low and gain a handful of FPS with barely any impact. If you crank this up, the game will get a bit more vegetation dense, leading to the outdoorsy scenes looking a bit better, but of course that comes with a huge impact in FPS. Low, maybe medium if you like a better looking environment, but low should be more than good enough. Hard drive speed, you can choose between SSD and HDD. I assume this has to do with the intensity of loading in textures and swapping things out. If you have this set to HDD, I assume it loads more and keeps things cached. That way you won't stutter and lose FPS randomly. If you have a hard drive and it's trying to request tons and tons of textures and models and things, delaying the whole process. Having this set to SSD means you have a much faster to drive that the game can read from, allowing it to pull textures and models as it needs it without causing too much delay. Obviously set this to what you have, SSD, SSD, or hard drive, HDD. Simple enough. I have this on an SSD, so I'll set it to SSD. Finally, shader cache, I'd absolutely recommend having this on if you have at least 12 gigs of RAM in your PC. Note that this isn't VRAM. This will lead to a huge gain in FPS, and if you're stuck with 8 or 6 gigs of actual PC RAM, I'd say you should have this turned off. 12 gigs is maybe a bit of a stretch, but if you have 16 or 14 gigs of RAM in your PC, absolutely have this turned on as you'll boost your FPS a ton and your performance. I'll apply these with spacebar and shaders will be re-optimized at the very top. You'll see your FPS tanks a lot while this is happening. Heading across to the audio tab, it's mainly just to do with volume. There's nothing too special going on here. You can turn on streamer mode to disable music or change music to be more stream friendly. If you're a streamer or you're planning to record this, absolutely have this turned on. Otherwise, you can mute music entirely here, but at least they do give you the option of a different soundtrack if necessary. Gameplay, this is your preference. You can choose language, subtitles, etc. I'll leave all of these on. Controls are pretty basic and additional content at the very top. These, I'm not entirely too sure what they do. So I'll leave this up to the comments. If you know that these have a positive or negative effect on FPS or anything like that, please do let me know down below so the rest of the community can know too. Anyways, waiting for the shady compilation to complete, FPS should drastically improve and we can hop into game here. Now, obviously, when you're loading into the game for the first time, or a new game rather, you'll be stuck in the intro quests for quite some time before you can eventually come to the open world. Just keep that in mind. This is the first taste and probably 
probably the last taste of the open world that you'll get for quite some time, as the intro quests do continue for quite some time. Over here, I'll pause and switch over to desktop recording. You can see I'm getting 140, 120-ish FPS in game now. Now, if I go ahead and pause it, options, quality, and crank it from my custom preset all the way to, say, Atomic, we'll see just how bad this game can get. Keep in mind, I'm running a 3080 Ti with a ton of RAM in my PC. Cranking this all the way up, I'm setting at 90, which is a really good sign, but I can see some weird things going on here with these people. I'm pretty sure that's DLSS. Yes, it is. We'll turn it off to get a more true representation of FPS. As such, there's a bit of an improvement, but we're sitting at 80-ish FPS. So DLSS can make a huge difference if you have it available. For example, from 80, cranking this to quality, that should give us around 90 or so. No, nope, there we go, 100. Pretty good. All the way to performance, for example, still around 108. That's a bit weird, but it should probably lead to a much bigger improvement on lower end hardware. Heading to Fidelity FX, quality gives me around 105, 110 ish FPS, but you can see a weird decrease in quality around some textures. Pushing it to ultra performance, for example, this should give me a huge increase in FPS, but the graphics quality does drop drastically. If you find yourself running really low quality hardware, this is probably one of the options you'll be choosing, but it'll look a lot better on a smaller screen. So balanced is probably a good in-between, and once again, quality is even better for graphic fidelity. There's barely any difference between these two, but you'll see a big drastic increase in FPS. Pushing it to performance, you can already see how weirdly pixely things are getting. DLSS doesn't have the same effect. Pushing it to performance, things are nowhere near as bad, but I don't know if this is pushing it as low as Fidelity FX in terms of resolution and upscaling. It really isn't bad. Pushing it down to low, for example, and DLSS set to quality. Personally, things look a heck of a lot better and performance is drastically better. 120-ish FPS. The optimization that I just showed you gives you pretty much this experience, but with much better quality than the default of just low. But anyways, as this is a story game, I'm not going to spoil too much, so I'll cut it off here. Thank you all for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.